Park Fork River is rising rapidly, and tonight we have team weather coverage. Flood water is still rising in this Orchard Homes neighborhood. I'm reporting there live tonight. The Clark Fork River will crest tonight. What you need to know is coming up. Plus tonight, my colleague Maritza Giorgio has new details for Missoula parents of graduating high school seniors. The news at five starts now. NBC Montana News at five starts right now. The Clark Fork River in Missoula is raging as waters continue to rise. New video from our NBC Montana Sky Team today over West Broadway Island. Officials closed the island due to rising waters and we're expecting the river to crest sometime around midnight. Chief Meteorologist Brooke Foster has been tracking river levels all day and we go to her live in the Weather Center for the latest. Brooke. Well, Laurel, it's not just the Clark Fork River in Missoula that is seeing minor flooding. Now the Bitterroot River near Missoula is seeing some minor flooding as well and we're going to keep a close eye on Missoula County. We do have flood warnings and advisories in place, but it's not just centered around Missoula. We have a number of rivers that are starting to rise. We're near flood stage for the Yak River near Troy, the Bitterroot River near Victor and the Big Hole River near Melrose. The good news is river levels are going to drop a bit as we head into the weekend. Right now, though, we are sitting at minor flood stage category for the Clark Fork River above Missoula and the Bitterroot River near Missoula. Minor flooding is occurring. When will the river relax? We'll have a look at that river gauge forecast coming up in a bit. All right, thanks, Brooke. And continuing our NBC Montana team coverage, we're tracking the conditions in the Orchard Homes area in Missoula, an area prone to flooding. Marion Davidson is live there with the very latest. Marion. Laurel, raindrops just started falling here in the Orchard Homes neighborhood. And take a look, water, flood water is still creeping up Tower, Tower Street. Kerwald Drive is right over there. Now this water, all of this coming from the Clark Fork River. That river, according to the National Weather Service, hit 10 and a half feet today. And just for pers some perspective, seven and a half feet is considered flood stage. Now I've been out here every day since Monday and the day to day changes have been dramatic. On Monday, I was able to get to the banks of the Clark Fork River. That's more than three football fields, I'd say over that way. On Tuesday, I was still able to park in that conservation land parking lot over there, which you can see is entirely underwater. And Wednesday, the flood water hadn't quite reached that power pole over there, but today it looks completely different. Just flood water flowing down Kerwald Drive. That isn't a river, that is a road over there. And the emergency services officials have told me time and again, flood water is not the same as regular standing water puddles. It's dangerous. So if you do see it, don't walk through it, don't drive through it, turn around. Now this is a developing situation. We're tracking the very latest for you right here on air and online. Live in Missoula, Marion Davidson, NBC Montana. Thanks, Marion. To track the conditions in your area, download our NBC Montana news and weather apps. They're free in your Apple or Android app stores. In that way, our severe weather alert team can keep you updated around the clock. A severe weather warning from Montana's Attorney General. Be careful of storm chasers promising to repair damage to your home. Those scammers usually take off with your money, and here's some steps you can follow if you need to hire a contractor. Research similar projects and learn the best way to complete it and the cost. Consider that are local reputable contractors, you can call 444-7734 to check the contractor's registration and the Office of Consumer Protection at 444-4500 to see if there are any complaints on your contractor. No date yet for the opening of Glacier National Park, but officials plan to start letting visitors in sometime in early June. The park will coordinate its reopening with the state. Governor Bullock announced the state will enter phase two of reopening on June 1st, and the travel directive will be lifted then as well. We'll let you know as soon as we find out more information. Graduation looks different this year for everyone, and today we got a clearer picture of what it will look like for Missoula County Public Schools. NBC Montana's Maritza Giorgio explains. Missoula's three big high schools will have their graduation ceremonies here at Washington Grizzly Stadium. UN President Seth Bodner offered the stadium to help with both physical space and because administrators felt safer with an outdoor venue. The idea split everyone into several large groups and they can use the stadium's ticketing which also helps with contact tracing should anyone start showing symptoms. All of these ceremonies are it's important for us to keep our students and our guests and our families safe. Um, that's our first and primary focus. Um, so we've got um, many precautions that we'll be outlining with our guests. 
Seniors are allowed two guests. The three ceremonies will be staggered Friday, June 5th, but they're holding June 6th in case of weather delays. Graduates need to wear these specially made cloth masks representing each school. Their guests are asked to bring their own and wear them. MCPS asks nobody travels out of state between now and the ceremony. No handshakes this year. Graduates will pick up diplomas from a table. Social distancing is a must for all, and there's no congregating in common areas like parking lots. Finally, everyone needs to leave right after the ceremony so crews can get to work sanitizing this huge space for the next group. And if your graduate feels uncomfortable, they don't have to be at the ceremony, and they will be live streaming all the ceremonies for any family who might be at home. And one more caveat here, leaders say at any time, health officials could scale this plan back depending on our local data at that time. Of course, if that happens, we'll let you know as soon as possible. Reporting at Washington Grizzly Stadium, Maritza Giorgio, NBC Montana. And the university will also light up the M and Main Hall for the first eight nights of June to honor all of Missoula County's graduating classes. New at 5, a special proclamation signed today to honor a Montana State Trooper shot and critically injured last year. Missoula County Commissioners decided May 22nd, tomorrow, will be Wade Palmer Day. Last year, Palmer was searching for a suspect in a separate shooting that killed one and injured two. Investigators say that same suspect shot Palmer as well. Palmer continues to recover at his family home. New information about how COVID-19 is impacting outdoor recreation in Montana. Two University of Montana researchers set up an online survey to see how people use city parks and trails during the stay-at-home order. Preliminary results show 40% of respondents found new trails and parks to use, and 98% reported that they stayed six feet apart on trails. They also found, people out, uh, found out most people head outdoors to experience solitude and rest mentally. Tonight, an update on this man. Officers located and arrested Jeremy Gibson at a home in Missoula Monday night. Law enforcement put out a warrant for him for strangulation and assault of a partner or family member stemming from an incident on May 12th. Well, do you need a new bike? Missoula police are hosting an online abandoned bike auction June 16th. You can view the items that will be available on June 15th and 16th at Gardner's Auction Service off Highway 93 south of Missoula. Viewing times are 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Monday and 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Tuesday. And then at 5 p.m. Tuesday, the online auction begins. You can register and participate in the auction at Gardner's website, and we have that link on our website at NBCMontana.com. The Trump campaign is sounding the alarm on states, making it easier for people to vote by mail. I'm Atrell Nishar in Washington with the steps Republican and Democratic leaders are taking and what the real risk of voter fraud looks like. Plus, digging deeper into Montana's pension obligations, what we uncovered and what it could mean for teachers' retirement. Do you have an Echo device? If so, you can get your severe weather alert updates and the latest news on your Amazon devices. Just say, Alexa, what's my flash briefing? But first, here's what you need to do. Download the Alexa app, go to settings, select flash briefing and search for NBC Montana. NBC Montana is President Trump visiting Michigan today where he's been sparring with the state's leadership most recently over the issue of mail in voting. Atra El Nishar shows us the political battle brewing across the country over absentee voting. Mail in ballots are very dangerous. There's tremendous fraud involved. President Trump making bold claims against a growing trend of state leaders making it easier to cast a ballot by mail, which the president has done himself while in office. We want to make certain that the democratic process is protected. Before visiting Michigan Thursday, President Trump threatened to pull federal funding for the state as its Democratic Secretary of State sends absentee voter applications to the more than 7 million registered Michigan voters. The Trump campaign calling it a plot by Democrats using the pandemic to distort the election. With an eye towards their objective, which is denying people the right to be able to show up in person. States led by Republicans are also making it easier for people to vote by mail, like Iowa, Georgia, and West Virginia. This, while more than half the states already allow for people to vote by mail without giving a reason, including Michigan, where voters passed no excuse absentee voting in 2018. The Trump campaign warns of widespread voter fraud with mail-in votes, but evidence to support that is sparse. In the state of Washington, one of five states where all vote by mail, out of more than 3 million votes cast in the 2018 election, the Secretary of State found only 142 cases of suspected improper voting. By mail system is secure. 
verified by a voter's signature. So really, as we know, the data shows voter fraud is infinitesimal. One thing Democrats and Republicans do agree on is the safety of voters must be protected. But if we learn anything from the Wisconsin presidential primary is that during the course of this crisis, when people have to vote in person, they become ill. Nobody wants to be reckless in the process. Certainly that's a foremost in President Trump's mind is making sure that in fact we protect Americans. With the general election just over five months away, state leaders are grappling with the pros and cons of changing how people can vote and if they have the infrastructure to do it efficiently. In Washington, I'm Atrel Nishar reporting. Still ahead, how a fluctuating market is impacting Montana's bottom line and the retirement pensions for teachers. We're tracking wind, rain, and snow. Your forecast is coming up. This segment of the news is brought... The law requires Montana to operate debt-free, and that's true of our state's two-year general operating budget. In fact, Montana has a surplus for day-to-day -day operations. But in a story you'll only see right here on NBC Montana, Heidi Miley found out Montana owes debts you don't see in the general budget. School administrators say the teachers and staff members prepare our children for the real world even when many in any given classroom are dealing with outside stresses. Great teachers not only make it relevant, but the kids excel regardless of what's going on at home, regardless of what's going on in the community. They do that on a daily basis. Teachers are among state employees. Montana is obligated to pay a retirement pension. But the University of Montana Bureau of Business and Economic Research predicts that Montana may come up against a shortfall. There's an imbalance there. Uh, there are not sufficient uh, funds set aside today to pay for those promises that we've made. At some point in the future, taxpayers of the future are going to be asked to make up the difference. So that, if you will, is, is, a, is a deficit. It's, it doesn't show up on the books as such, but it's, uh, it's something that has to be paid, that we've committed to do, but we haven't set the funds aside to do. Patrick Barkey likens pension programs to two tracks that move along into perpetuity. One is the investment fund earnings. The other is what the state is obligated to pay out. When the two move along at the same rate, pensions are 100% funded. When the obligation track is moving faster than the investment earnings track, pensions are underfunded. The Montana Board of Investments figures that current investment growth should cover 74% of Montana's pension obligations. However, Barkey figures earnings will likely only cover 50% of what Montana will owe. The state of Illinois is one of the worst states with pension debt, only having 30% of its future pension obligations covered. Officials also say New Jersey and Kentucky are facing nightmare scenarios too. The DeSmet School principal in Missoula says teachers deserve security in retirement. Teaching um, is a tough job. So after 25, 30 years of service with that, we say we are now going to make sure that you're taken care of. You know, thank you very much. Even if the Wall Street funds fall short, Montana is obligated to pay pensions. Reporting in Missoula, I'm Heidi Miley, NBC Montana. Tomorrow, we compare predictions for Wall Street returns on Montana's pension funds and how soon Montana may need to find money elsewhere should those returns fall short. Well, lots of snow still in Montana. Take a look at this. This is at the Red Rock Lakes National Wildlife Refuge in southwest Montana, and that's where the elevation is 6,700 feet. Wow. Thanks to Cortez Roar for chiming in this photo, this video, and you can do the same at NBCMontana.com slash chime in. And here's now a live look over Kalispell, a different scene there, partly cloudy skies, and it looks like it's really windy. The camera there is shaking. Chief Meteorologist Brooke Foster, she's tracking all the weather changes out there. We go to her live. We do have a wind advisory in place for northwest Montana. We're going to talk about that in a moment, but let's get a quick look at the Clark Fork River above Missoula. I just updated this graphic. It's now going to crest uh, just over 10 and a half feet as we head into the evening hours. That crest more than likely will happen a little before midnight. Then as we head into your Friday and into your Saturday and Sunday, river levels are going to come down, but 
it's going to remain a concern because we're going to stay in that minor flood stage category. Now, one question I've had multiple times over the past couple of days is why we say above Missoula. Well, the Clark Fork River comes into Missoula on the east side, so that's above Missoula. It makes its way through Missoula in the Orchard Homes area, and then it dumps out over towards the big, the uh, big flat area. That's where our below Missoula gauge is. We're keeping an eye on both gauges. Now, the above Missoula uh, River gauge is in that minor flood stage category category, but we're still below flood stage uh, for the below river uh, gauge there in Missoula. Now the Bitterroot River is running into Missoula and it is sitting in that minor flood stage category. So Missoula is kind of the focus for the flooding, but as I mentioned, river levels are going down as we head into the weekend. A lot of you have noticed the wind today. We recorded a peak wind gust of 35 miles per hour in Missoula. We had a 41 mile per hour wind gust in Bozeman, but take a look at Cutbank, 58 mile per hour wind earlier today. So high wind warning is up around Cutbank. We've got a lake wind advisory, one to three foot waves possible out on Flathead Lake that advisory expires though at six and then southwest Montana you are under a winter weather advisory as we head into the overnight hours snow levels are going to drop and we're going to see some accumulating snow a little bit of rain will move into our valley locations as we head into the evening hours we're going to watch you in the Bitterroot Valley that's where we could see some brief heavy rain maybe even a weak rumble of thunder future trackers essentially our future satellite and radar notice what happens though as we head into the overnight hours southwest Montana you start to see some of that snow fly as far as accumulations go, we're not going to see a ton, but above 6,000 feet under that winter weather advisory, we could see two to five inches of snow, even though that winter weather advisory is for Gallatin County, it does not include Bozeman or Bozeman Pass. But I do think Bozeman Pass, I think Homestead and even McDonald Pass and Lost Trail Pass could see a little bit of light snow accumulate overnight tonight. Here's our low temperatures. We're down to 32 in Butte, 35 in Bozeman. Uh, still above the frost level, but chilly in Missoula at 39. We'll be at 40. 41 in Kalispell. Tomorrow, high temperatures topping out in the upper 50s for Missoula, right around the 60 degree mark in Bozeman. Scattered showers for us. Could see a rain snow mix early tomorrow morning in Butte. Elsewhere, just a few spotty sprinkles and showers. Additional accumulations should stay relatively light. Here's your seven day forecast. Saturday, Sunday, you're good to go with those outdoor plans. Temperatures will be a little bit warmer by Sunday in the mid 60s. For your Memorial Day, we're going to be right around the 70 degree mark. There's a very isolated chance of seeing a shower or two as we head into Memorial Day uh, into your afternoon. So just keep that in mind if you're going to be head heading out on any of our area lakes. And then next week, a couple of shower chances here and there. Otherwise, nice and comfortable as we hang out in the 70s. For Missoula and Hamilton, seven day forecast, a couple of showers for the Bitterroot Valley tomorrow. Drier skies this weekend, temperatures warming up as well. We're back to normal in the upper 60s on Sunday. And then your Memorial Day, couldn't ask for a better forecast. Temperatures are going to be in the mid-70s on Monday. Mix of sun and clouds and a slight chance of a late-day shower pops up for your Monday. For Bozeman and Butte, you have a wintry mix of rain and snow to deal with for your Friday. Those showers will taper off Friday afternoon. A couple of lingering showers east of the divide for Bozeman on Saturday. But overall, you've got a pretty good weekend. You'll be in the low 60s on Sunday, and just like the rest of us, your temperatures are going to make their way into the low 70s for your Memorial Day, but check out your forecast for Tuesday. That's a thunderstorm chance for you in Bozeman, so stay alert to changing weather conditions. So somewhat of a break from the flooding and the rain for the holiday weekend. Right, but don't let your guard down, especially in Missoula because of the Clark Fork River. It's still going to stay in that minor flood stage category, but it's definitely going to drop a bit. So be on alert. Right. Okay. Thank you so much. And coming up today, Governor Bullock visits a drive through testing site on one of Montana's reservations. How it went after the break. This segment of the news. Governor Steve Bullock visited a drive through testing site in Browning on the Blackfeet Reservation. It's part of the state's efforts to partner with tribal communities to perform Bullock's enhanced surveillance testing. The drive through testing site there consists of two lanes for all who want to be tested. The state wants to test both symptomatic and asymptomatic individuals to quickly isolate new cases. Bullock said it was great visiting the Blackfeet Nation and seeing their drive through program. Another donation from Northwestern Energy to assist communities hurt by the coronavirus. Today, they announced another $100,000 in aid, bringing their total amount to $400,000 they've donated. This aid will provide grants in the form of energy bill credits for some small business customers. It will also help free up resources for small businesses as they recover and provide employment for community members. Well, coming up, what we're working on for our later shows, but first, here's what's coming up on NBC Nightly News.
Ahead for us, new guidance from the CDC about how coronavirus spreads and changes in the pews as houses of worship confront the challenges of coronavirus and government restrictions. When we see you back here tonight. When allergies attack, NBC Montana team coverage of flooding with new information coming up tonight at 6. And tonight, what sheriff's deputies are telling people who live in these camps off Reserve Street. And that's at 6 o'clock again. A New York brewery is putting smiles on customers' faces. And it's not just the beer that's making them happy. It's actually these two, Buddy and Barley, <laughs> the Golden Retrievers, are jumping into the family business, delivering beer for Six Harbors Brewing Company on Long Island. Their owners decided to bring their best buds along on delivery stops to brighten the days of customers stuck at home during the pandemic and it's a pretty easy gig look at that both buddy and barley <laughs> bring empty cans to customers while everyone else does the heavy lifting i hope they're getting some good tips there <laughs> that makes me so happy yeah they look like having a great time but you know what also makes me happy is that we're gonna have a nice memorial day weekend we're finally gonna kick out that rain temperatures are gonna warm up we'll see temperatures in the mid 70s for your monday in missoula uh, we'll be at 70 in Butte on Monday. Uh, Bozeman, your weekend's not going to start off as nice. We do have a couple of showers in the forecast for Bozeman on Saturday, but by Sunday, drier skies, low 60s, and then you'll reach into the low 70s by Monday. Uh, as far as our next weather maker, we do have a couple of chances for some isolated showers and thunderstorms by the middle of next week. All right, overall, a great forecast and uh, to make your plans with. Thanks so much. We have new information coming up at 6 o'clock on the flooding, so be sure to join us then.